how are you today? This is Ro. Welcome back to the Tequila Princess channel. Have you ever heard that eagle song that says, Welcome to the Hotel California. Such a lovely place. Well, today we're going to be exploring the state of Baja California Sur, where there is a little tiny town of which some people say that this song talks about. You want to find out? Keep watching! Welcome back for another Mexico piece by piece episode. Can we call them episodes? Chapter? Whatever. So today we're talking about the other Baja California, the South Calida Fornax. Remember, that is the origin of the name Baja California, meaning hot oven. <laughs> and it is quite hot over there. Still, perfect weather for a beach vacation. Yes! Baja California South, where you can find Los Cabos, was along with Quintana Roo, where you can find Cancun, the youngest states in Mexico. They were pronounced independent states on 1974, meaning that it's not even 50 years old. Super young for a state. And it is the ninth biggest in Mexico, but the second least populated, meaning that there is a lot of territory that is just open for all nature to take over, relax, and be cool and pretty. <laughs> The weather is dry in general, although you might find some areas where you might find a little bit more humidity, allowing it to have several different ecosystems. And the weather is not as extreme as in the northern Baja California. We have a minimum of 9 Celsius degrees and a maximum of 35 Celsius degrees, which is perfect weather for relaxing on the beach, taking the sun, admiring nature, just chill and relax. As before, we're going to be talking about the Pueblos Mágicos first. Remember, it's this government's program where certain small towns receive a little extra budget to keep everything pretty and to promote culture, history, and everything that is cool and great about Mexico. Baja California South has two of those, Loreto and Todos Santos. Loreto is very well known because it's ideal for go watching the whale shark. Loreto is a very old city. It's also known as the historical capital city of Baja California because it was the very first city that was founded in 1697. From there, all the missions and commerce started spreading out through the whole peninsula. When visiting this town, you will find peace, quiet, and tranquility. You will find yourself surrounded by history and you need to go to Misión de San Francisco Javier de Ville Viando y a la Misión de Nuestra Señora de Loreto. Besides their religious importance, of course, but if you're not a religious person, it doesn't matter because all history in Baja California started in those two places. If you go on December the 3rd, you will find a peregrination going from San Francisco Javier's mission to the Loreto's mission. It is quite an event. If you like snorkeling and nature watching, I recommend you go to the National Park Bahia de Loreto, where you can practice kayak, snorkel, and just go and admire all the beautiful fauna and flora that you can find there. Also from Loreto, you can hire a lot of tours that will take you to one of the many islands that are nearby, all of them beautiful in their own way, particularly to the Coronado Island, the most popular for go watching the blue whale, from January to March. The second magic town is Todos Santos. If you speak Spanish, you will find it very funny that it's not Todos los Santos. No, it's Todos Santos. I, I think it's just funny. <laughs> it is located in the skirts of the Sierra La Laguna, in between Valle del Pilar and the Pacific Ocean, giving it a very particular weather that was very favorable for the production of sugarcane many years ago. At some point, this tiny town had eight sugar factories because it was just so prolific. Although today the main attractive of the place is the beaches, particularly Playa Guaycura, with its beautiful boutique hotel and the lighthouse, and Punta Lobos, where you can also find beautiful views and delicious beaches. On the other hand, you can find Misión Santa Rosa Todos Los Santos, a beautiful mission from back in the day. And next to it, 
ta 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 The famous or infamous no famous Hotel California Welcome to the Hotel California Such a lovely place I would love to say that the Eagles stayed there and got the inspiration for their song while driving in the highway on the desert arriving to this hotel next to the mission where you can hear the bells and created this iconic song unfortunately it's not the place that inspired this song it is actually a rehab center in Norco, California but it's also known as Hotel California but hey, it's fun to think that you can go to a place that sounds so similar to the song. <laughs> if you visit Todos Santos, you might as well want to stay there. It's such a lovely place anyway. <laughs> yeah, I will show myself out. Kidding, I'm back. Now let's talk about festivities. We're going to be starting with the Reggae Festival. It is actually held during the last week of February in Loreto. And there is not much explaining to do. It's a whole week full of a lot of artists floating us with their beautiful vibes with the reggae music. Mm, yeah. <laughs> and then we have the Pitahayas Festival. I found this one particularly cool. You see, the traditional dressing in the Baja California Sur area is called pitahaya, which is also the name of a fruit that comes from a cactus. So in this, on the skirt of this dress, you find a pitahaya embroidery. And the dress is so particularly beautiful and different that I just love it. The Pitahayas Festival is a contest where the women will show their beautiful dresses and a winner is crowned at the end of the festival. And during this one, or any other kind of festival, festivity, or a very important town party, you will find the Tlacuachadas, which is a horse racing in the charro style. In most of the big events, you will find these horse racing, and they are usually accompanied by traditional regional music, which makes them super fun. And finally, we have Los Cabos International Cinema Festival, which is an annual event where you will have a wide variety of different films from all over the world, where locals and tourists alike can enjoy. And talking about the movies, there is an actress fairly well known who's originally from La Paz, Baja California Sur. Her name is Dolores Heredia. If you are familiar with the Mexican cinema, you might have seen her in Santitos in 1999, or more recently, Recently, from 2019, Chicuarotes. She's a great actress, and I personally think she's also gorgeous. <laughs> but Baja California, of course, not only has beauty and talent in the scenic arts, <laughs> we also have talent in the more sporty activities. We have Paola Espinosa, who is also from La Paz, Baja California. She is a diver. She won a gold medal in the 10 meters platform diving during the World Championship of Rome in 2009. But as we are more familiar with the Olympic Games, she also has a couple medals in those ones too. She participated in the synchronized diving category in Pekin 2008, winning the bronze medal. And later, in London 2012, she won silver. Same category, synchronized diving. As a person that is terrified of heights and that has water issues, and she's someone that is willing to go up to a platform 10 meters tall and jump into the water, creating magic in the middle. She's my hero. I want to be like her when I grow up. <laughs> and speaking about La Paz, of course you have to go there. It's a beautiful city and you have many things to do over there. Do you remember we talked about Baja 1000 in the previous video? If you don't, don't worry, I will leave you a link over here so that you can check it out after you finish with this video, of course. That off-road competition finishes exactly in La Paz, Baja California Sur. So that's one very good reason to go visit the place. But it's obviously not the only one. You might want to go and walk along the waterfront promenade. It's a beautiful 10 kilometer promenade. And the sunsets there, oh! they will take your bread away. The food is amazing over there. We're gonna be talking about food later on, but also you will find 
many beaches that are super worthwhile, particularly Playa Balandra, which is a natural protected area where you can relax and enjoy nature in a beautiful low tide where you can relax. But also make sure to go and Instagram your selfie with Piedra Balandra. And another thing that you can go parting from La Paz is to visit the island Espiritu Santo. It's also very famous because there is a beautiful reef where you can snorkel and enjoy the company of beautiful and colorful fishes. And of course, we cannot talk about Baja California Sur without talking about Los Cabos, San Jose del Cabo and Cabo San Lucas. If you arrive by plane, you most likely will arrive to San Jose del Cabo. Parting from San Jose and going to San Lucas, you will find in the whole coastline a touristical corridor with hotels and restaurants and nightclubs and all sorts of things necessary for having the vacations of your life. If you're staying over there between November and June, check the Tuesdays Art Walk, where the streets will be floated by the galleries with the art so that you have a more approachable experience with it, with all sorts of art from paintings, music, dance, performances, a little bit of everything. It's super fun. And when arriving to Cabo San Lucas, make sure to take the tour that will take you to the most famous rock formation, probably in the whole country, <laughs> the Arch. The boat will take you to take a picture with the famous Arch and also to La Playa del Amor, the love beach. And although there are many other beautiful towns and places that I would like to tell you about, I want to choose only a few. And definitely Santa Rosaria is a must. Back in the day, in the early 1900s, Santa Rosaria was a big deal. It was the mining town by excellence. You could find a lot of copper. And that's why many French people decided to make Santa Rosalia their homes. You will find a lot of beautiful French-influenced architecture over there. Just as a little curious trivia, Santa Rosalia was the second city to have electrical light. Isn't it cool? Nowadays, it's more touristical and super quiet, although there is still some mining being done. Another beautiful super calm, quiet, and amazing place that you need to visit is San Luis Gonzaga's Bay. The town is small and simple, but the bay, oh my god, is beautiful. You will find it on the side of the California Gulf, which means that the waters are more calm and easy to navigate. You will find a lot of fun activities that you can do on the water. For example, you can go for sport fishing, snorkel, kayak, windsurf, and, and sailing. Get ready for some amazing pictures over there. Remember that I told you that Baja California Sur is one of the least populated, being one of the biggest? That is in part because we have one of the biggest biosphere reserve in the world, with almost two and a half million hectares of land protected. The biosphere reserve of El Vizcaíno has a great variety of ecosystems, deserts, pine forest, mangrove, mesquites, and lagoons with a wild and extensive variety of species that are being protected over there. We have another biosphere reserve that is not as big as this one, but it's also very important. Sierra La Laguna, with 112,000 hectares, it's also super big. It is the house of 586 different species. Out of those, 72 are endemic to this region. Endemic means that you can only find them there. Sierra La Laguna, seen from above, is beautiful because you can see just a big green spot in the middle of the desert. We also have Sierra La Giganta, which is a little bit more desertic style, kind of a natural park, but still beautiful. And it's perfect for hiking, for trekking, for rock climbing, and of course, nature watching. It receives its name from the biggest mountain in this mountain range, La Giganta, the giant woman, with a height of 1,680 meters above the sea level. Now, finishing with the land beautiful places to see, there is a marine area that I want you to make sure to visit because it's impressive, Cabo Pulmo. 
It is only one hour and a half away from San Jose del Cabo, and it is exactly where the Pacific Ocean and the California Gulf meet. So you will have the cold and warm waters of these two almost combining together. You will be able to have a huge variety of species to look at. This place is ideal for snorkel and also for diving. Oh, I wish I could dive so that I could go and see the hump, hump, <laughs> that's like a tongue twister, humpback, <laughs> humpback, humpback whale, the whale shark, the manta rays, the sea lions, and all those huge schools of fishes on the water. It would be a dream come true, but you can, so you go ahead and do it. Before we pass to the food section, which is obviously always my favorite, <laughs> I want to show you something that if you think about it, it might make you hungry so that you can enjoy and crave for the dishes that I will show you later. In the north part of Mexico, the music and the dance is very different from the center and the south. In Baja California Sur has a couple dances traditional dances that I find particularly interesting. The first one, it is called Los Calabaceados, and it is typically danced in couples, and it's kind of a competition because it's a resistance competition. It's for the couples to dance until they cannot move anymore, and the last one standing is the winner. exhausting it must be, this incredible dance. In elementary schools here in Mexico, I believe in many places, but I'm not really sure, we have the tradition of preparing um, traditional dances so that our parents can enjoy watching their kids dance during special events like Mother's Day, Father's Day, and the closure of the school cycle. I remember when I was in fourth grade, my teacher decided to show us a dance from the northern part of Mexico. I didn't know at that time, but we were dancing Tupe with the song Santa Rita. <laughs> I still remember the name. <laughs> and I wanted to show you the style. It is a little bit similar to European polka, but with some mixed Mexican movements in there. of the video. Food. Yes! The first dish that I want to share with you is filete imperial de camarón. Very simple yet delicious. You have your camarones, shrimp, that are cooked. You wrap them in bacon, you finish it on the griddle, and then you serve it with a coriander dressing. I think my mouth is already watering. <laughs> in Baja California Sur, as well as in Baja California, you will find a lot of seafood, especially clams. A particular kind of clam that is called garra de león, lion's paw, is found in some of the Baja California South lagoons, and you can only find it there. There is this dish, Ceviche de callo de almeja garra de león. Callo, if I'm not mistaken, is this meaty part where the clam is attached to the shell. Ceviche is a particular preparation of the fish or seafood where you don't cook it per se. You cook it in lime juice. In this case, you will use the gallos from this lion paw clam, and then you will mix it with orange juice, lime juice, olives, tequila, olive oil, onion, and two kinds of chili, poblano chili and serrano chili. Oh boy, when I saw this recipe, I'm desperate to try it. It sounds delicious. Our next dish is super norteño. It is machaca de mantarraya. Machaca usually is meat that was salted and sun-dried and then with a rock grind it until it's almost like powder. In times where the meat was going super pricey, they opted for using manta rays meat to make machaca. The taste is similar yet different and definitely unique. It is popularly eaten with scrambled eggs or in burritos. 
As I said before, clams are kind of a specialty over there. And there is one particular kind of clam that is super popular. Almeja chocolate, chocolate clam. It is a beautiful clam that has a brown riveted color on the shell, looks like it's made of chocolate, and it's super big around the size of my hand. <laughs> the dish that I want to introduce you to is almejas chocolatas tatemadas. This is a pre-colonial way of preparing these clams and you can find them particularly in Loreto. You will pick up as many chocolate clams as you can. Then you will have a layer of gravel on the sand and you will pick the clams with the open part downwards and start putting them one next to another, making them kind of standing. Once you finish, you will cover them with gravel again. After that, you will find a special kind of a bush that grows in the beach that is called romerillo and you will put it on top of this gravel area and light it up. You will roast them, cook them, whatever, for 40 minutes and then they are ready to be eaten. And let's finish this presentation with a sweet dessert, chimangos, which is a very simple, something in between a cookie and a bread that is made with a flour and piloncillo, which is a cone made with unrefined brown sugar. Once you have the flour with the piloncillo mixed together, you cut the pieces and you fry them. And they are traditionally eaten with either coffee or tea. One thing that I love about this Mexico piece by piece series is that I am not only sharing with you how beautiful, interesting, and attractive Mexico is, which of course, as a Mexican, I think it is, but also I get to learn so much more about my country, not only about the places and things to do when I travel to those places, but also about the food and drinks that there are for you to enjoy in every single place. I am loving it. I hope that you are liking it too. Tell me so far which has been your favorite state. Maybe you want to tell me which one are you waiting excitedly for me to get to? Leave me in the comments down below which is your favorite state in Mexico. As always, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. And if you have, don't forget to click on the notifications bell so that you get notified when I upload a new video. My curls and I would like to thank you for watching and see you next week. Bye!